Um, okay, progressives. One of the things I want you to remember is the progressive movement is not a single movement. It's a whole bunch of little movements, all aimed at improving society from what they see as the ills caused mostly by industrialization. Okay? You have a movement where Dylan's for cleaning up the government. You have a movement where Alyssa's for having prohibition. You have a movement where Adam's for um, right to, um, or getting rid of lynching. Chris is for women's right to vote. Um, Emma's for fixing education. Uh, Cameron is for William James's idea of pragmatism and, and being more practical. Okay, there are tons of things that fit under these, this um, better working conditions, getting rid of immigration, etc. Who supported it or who were the progressives? The progressives tended to be educated, upper middle class Americans, okay, who had a social conscience. They wanted to improve society. They weren't the rich looking for the next buck as fast as they could make it. They were the people who made enough money to realize that everyone could make money and it would be a better situation. The difference between populists and progressives, progressives want to reform. Okay, they, the populists wanted to radically change things. So let's take the issue of ownership of railroads. Populists want the government to own railroads. Do progressives? No. They just want the government to be able to regulate railroads. Banks. Populists want to get rid of them totally and have the government pick up the, the whole idea of loans and savings. What do progressives want? They want banking reforms. Okay? Um, so that's the major difference. Populists were primarily farmers. Progressives were primarily city people. Why didn't progressives last? Well, one of the things I think that you will notice if you haven't already seen it, but that you will notice in the next 80 years or however long you're alive on this earth is that we go through cycles. About every 10 to 15 years in this country, we go from liberal to conservative. Liberal to conservative. Think about the 20th century. We start off with the progressive movement, a liberal movement, and then World War I happens, Americans are horrified, and we go into a conservative mode, which is the 1920s. And then the Great Depression happens and we're so horrified by the excesses of the 1920s and the business of America being nothing but business that we go into a very liberal government take charge kind of thing. And then World War II comes along and it's over and we switch back to a more conservative thing because we're going to fight communism. Um, we've done all the, the things we need to fix in the 1930s so we're more conservative. And then comes the 1960s and we're more liberal again. And it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. So the progressives have kind of served their time. They got some laws changed. They got the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th amendments passed. And it was time for a change. Plus World War I comes along and that horrifies people and, and takes away some of the zest for change. Thorstein Veblen, um, theory of the leisure class where he criticized Americans for conspicuous consumption. He was a big proponent of scientific management or efficiency. He talked about how the governing people ought to be engineers because they were practical and um, thought logically and steps or whatever. Uh, the role of muckrakers in the progressive movement, muckrakers were the writers, whether they be journalists or novelists. Um, think about Upton Sinclair and the impact the book The Jungle had. Okay. What concerned women in the early 20th century factories, the big issue for women was safety. Um, that their clothes wouldn't be caught in machines, that they weren't breathing in lots of dust from the material, that they um, had seats with backs on it when they had to sit at a sewing machine for 12 hours a day, that type of thing. That they wouldn't put their hand down and lose a finger because of the machine would attack it, so to speak. Women's suffrage, what produced sympathy for women? So why did women not ultimately get the right to vote? Basically because they picked up the slack at home during World War I. It was the reward for having been good soldiers, so to speak, at home during World War I. Uh, who opposed women's suffrage? Well, 
a lot of opposition came from women themselves who thought politics were too dirty and it would corrupt women. Josephine Dodge, who was a leading critic, a very wealthy woman, said that she had her political influence was over her husband from the bedroom point of view, and she would lose that if she got to vote. Uh, there were those who thought politics were just too rough for women, okay, not just corrupt, but also rough. Um, what were the obstacles for them to overcome, meaning women to get the right to vote? They had to persuade people that it wouldn't change women. Margaret Sanger advocated birth control. She actually starts Planned Parenthood. Um, who backed temperance? The temperance movement or prohibition movement was really backed by women because they were the biggest victims of alcohol, they and their children. The jungle, the effects, people were horrified by the conditions in meat packing plants and it inspired not only the Meat Inspection Act but also the Pure Food and Drug Act. Okay. Euler versus Oregon, a court case where work, women were given a 10-hour workday instead of 12. John Muir and conservation, a picture with Teddy Roosevelt. There's a famous picture of Teddy Roosevelt with this old geezer with a big white beard looking out over Hecky Heck in California, which is this pristine uh, land of valleys and hills and stuff. Anyway, the whole idea is what, it, what were they looking at? They're looking at nature and preserving it. That's what the whole thing with John Muir is. Have you been to Muir Woods in San Francisco? It's an area of Golden Gate Park that's preserved. Okay. Um, Teddy Roosevelt and trust busting, yes. He was the first president to bust trust. The difference between Teddy and the two guys who follow him uh, Taft and Ro Wilson is that Teddy believed there were good trusts and there were bad trusts. And you only break up the bad trusts. Okay, bad trusts, good trusts. I own the only toilet paper producing company in America. When I acquire uh, my trust, I ultimately have control of all the toilet paper and toilet paper is selling for 50 cents a roll. As a good trust, I leave the price at 50 cents a roll. If I'm a bad trust, <laughs> I raise the price to a dollar a roll, and you have no choice but to pay it. Okay, Teddy says when I raise the price to a dollar a roll, that's when I need to be broken up. Taft and Wilson said a trust is a trust, it doesn't matter, and they all need to be broken up. Under Teddy, there was the case of the Northern Securities Company, which showed that not all trusts had to be stopped, only bad trusts. Um, the Hepburn Act. Uh, gave greater control to the Interstate Commerce Commission to regulate railroads. It helped create the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, which gave the government the right to control trade better. The 1912 election, who ran? How was it like the 1860 election? And what occurred because of party split? So in 1912, Teddy Roosevelt wants the Republican nomination again. Okay, he gave it up in 1908, but he doesn't like Taft, so he wants to have it back. He doesn't get it. Taft gets the Republican nomination. So he breaks away from the Republican Party and starts a progressive party dubbed the Bull Moose Party. Okay. The Democrats nominate Woodrow Wilson and the fourth party candidate in this election is Eugene B. Debs. Okay. The Republicans split the vote between Teddy and Taft. And what happens? Wilson waltzes in and runs, wins the election. How is this like the 1860 election? Who becomes president in 1860? Lincoln. Remember there were two Democratic candidates that year, Breckinridge and Douglas. They split the vote between the North and the South, and Lincoln waltzes in and becomes president. Okay? 